guys. I'm, uh, I'm actually very excited to moderate this panel. Uh, I wish actually we could probably take this panel to Copenhagen next year. Um, I talked about you know how Sri Lanka has been leading the way uh, when it comes to sustainability for many, many, many years. And what we're doing in this panel is uh, representation from, from, the, from the supply chain uh, to talk about initiatives uh, sort of that we've sort of some of them which already been talked about. Um, from the social and both environmental uh, side of things. Uh, so each, each person will sort of talk a little bit about some of the initiatives. And what you'll actually find here is there's a lot of collaboration amongst all of us. Uh, and that's great. But as I say, it's, uh, we've heard a few times today that we all need to work together to achieve what we want to achieve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, ask each panelist um, a particular question um, and they will introduce themselves, um, maybe for a quick 30 seconds, and then do an intro on the question. Uh, we're short of time, so we're going to try and then open it up to questions um, after that. So, let me start with uh, uh, Iranti, right? Uh, Iranti, served by MAS. And Iranti and actually I've been working together actually on, on the Social and Labour Convergence Project. And so, Iranti, I just wanted to ask you, you know, you've been involved in this project for the last couple of years, and, and Sri Lanka has really led the way. Um, you know, we actually had the launch here two weeks ago, the global launch. Um, so really sort of, can you just elaborate more about what this project is and how it's addressing uh, the, the issue we have with, with all the fatigue and what it intends to do and, and how you have been involved in it and what you feel Sri Lanka can, and what, you know, obviously Sri Lanka's role in it. Good morning everyone. I'm Eranti and I work with Sri Lanka Sustainable Development. I would like to say three things to introduce myself to this forum. Um, I have had industrial experience for the last 17 years working in the panel industry. Um, secondly, I have worked for an NGO, worked uh, for a brand, and now working for a manufacturer, which obviously helps. And um, I have had industry experience and exposure to multiple uh, parts of uh, the globe, uh, which includes Asia, Middle East, and uh, Americas. And I work closely with uh, industry organizations such as Sustainable Apparel Coalition, IFC, Better Work, and of course the Social and Labor Convergence Project. Um, so, so, I made some notes to make sure that I share all the information that's required. So the Social and Labor Convergence Project, or the SLCP, was launched in, Jan in February 2016 with about 20 signatories who wanted to reduce audit fatigue. So the objective of this program is actually to reduce the number of audits. As manufacturers, we go through multiple audits, maybe sometimes as much as five audits per month in a factory. So it was for us, enough is enough. And even the brands understood that the only way to make significant industry improvement was to really collaborate and work together. So this idea of coming up with one audit tool was born. However, after many discussions, we realized that audit was not really the way to move forward. So we decided to come up with an assessment framework, which would be a tool to gather data about each manufacturing facility, which then in turn could be used by each brand to um, calibrate against their code of conduct. So each factory would have to just undergo one assessment per year, and that information can be shared as the factory decides with the brands that they work with, and, that, and each brand can use this particular set of data to assess the factory using their code of conduct. So that basically is the idea behind this, the primary objective being to reduce body fatigue and to improve industry collaboration. So the scope is that and um, some key words that I would like to share with you, industry collaboration. This term was widely discussed throughout the three year project. So in coming up with the tool, um, brands and brand Brands worked among themselves. Manufacturers collaborated with themselves. 
but also brands, manufacturers, other stakeholders like uh, auditing firms or academia. They, we all work together discussing how to come up with this assessment framework. And so there was a lot of collaboration within these three years. But also go forward, there will be a lot of collaboration. That, that is mandatory. And the other key term would be equal partnership. Um, right from the beginning, some, a lot of the time, the manufacturers are dictated as to what needs to be done. So there was a lot of discussion among the manufacturers that this is not the way to move forward in the industry. We have to work together with the brands to take this industry forward and to see significant improvement. So therefore, we all got together in equal partnership. Um, it, it didn't go all well throughout the project. However, there was genuine effort to do this. And I would say we succeeded to a large extent. So those are the key uh, projects, uh, key terms that we used during the projects. And uh, in terms of uh, how Sri Lanka led the way, um, actually, Nikhil and I did a lot of work. We were personally involved because Hydramanis and MAS became signatories to the project right from the beginning because we wanted to be part of this um, initiative. We didn't want to be told later on, this is how it's going to be. We felt that it's good to be part of this initiative right from the beginning so that we had a um, we had control over how things would be decided. So that was one. And also because uh, our organizations, um, our leading organizations in the apparel industry worldwide, and we felt that as manufacturers, it is our duty to spend time, resources on this project, to take this project forward as an industry uh, initiative. And um, therefore, uh, Hydromanies and MAS were signatories, signatories and we uh, did a lot of work, working in the working groups, coming up with assessment frameworks, the tool itself, and also Nikhil was part of the steering team. So a lot of the decision making um, was done at the steering team level, and then I was part of the project management team where a lot of the project management took place. So I would say Sri Lanka led right from the beginning. And of course, JAF uh, was the first industry organization to have joined have to, uh, to have become a signal to this um, initiative as well. And uh, as Nikki mentioned, two weeks ago, this was launched in Sri Lanka. And Sri Lanka was selected as the right place to launch this to see how things can go well because of the general um, appreciation for sustainability within the industry and also because of certain pra practical um, ease like, you know, the tool didn't have to be translated to uh, any other language, everything could be done in English, etc. Right. Uh, I mean, again, I think obviously involved in it, Sri Lanka led the way, and watch this space because I think this is going to be an assessment that's going to be used across the whole industry in the next couple of years. So, really, really good and really proud to be part of that and proud that Sri Lanka was involved in it. So, moving now to uh, another side of sustainability, um, and that we've heard a lot about today is, is innovation. So, we have Lloyd here. You know, and, and there's a deep connection between innovation and, and sustainability. I know you've come back recently to Sri Lanka from uh, after obtaining a PhD in innovative manufacturing and industrial sustainability. Thank you for coming back. You know, uh, great to have you back. Uh, so, can you can you just outline to us, you know, how you've sort of implemented your knowledge into your business? Uh, share maybe some of the innovations what you can. Uh, and, and why Sri Lanka again is a hub for innovation and sustainability to work together? I think uh, start off by saying I'm, I'm Lloyd and uh, really how my journey started. It was in 2007 and I was really trying to understand what sustainability and I was in Brompton Bicycles doing my internship uh, going through the waste bin and that was my, my project uh, understanding the root causes there and it was resource efficiency. That was the understanding back then and doing a lot of work on optimizing, reducing waste. And then it was around 2009, I got into Ford, where with Lean, I was working on uh, simulation, and we were 
mapping all the resource flows and we were conducting much more advanced uh, experiments. And then I had to come back to Sri Lanka to join my family business, which is show to show. We do uh, packaging and labeling. And before I took on those shoes, I was asking myself the question, uh, you know, how do I lead this organization? And I felt I wasn't ready. I didn't fully understand uh, sustainability and I, need, I needed to understand more. So I went on uh, to do a PhD at uh, Cambridge. Uh, it was a center that had 70 million pounds in funding just to understand this. And they had divided it up into eco-efficiency, you know, within factories. We see Brandix, MAs, Hydromoney, and so many others here leading the way. But uh, I got to see other sectors like uh, Toyota, for example, working with them where they reduce the energy it takes to make one car by 75%. And uh, they were defining something called Kentani, which is the fundamental minimum. You know, here we're always benchmarking uh, against, you know, 10-year targets, reducing by 30%, whatever. And here it was a totally different logic. And then uh, I went and worked with AB Sugar, where we saw uh, them being able to see what we call field value in our research. So they saw heat and CO2 coming out from their processes. A, normally, a normal factory would let this just emit into thin air. They had biologists and chemists who saw the value of this, were able to capture this in a greenhouse, and today they're the second largest growers of tomato. Uh, they're making a sugar company making uh, bioethanol. So many uh, uh, byproducts uh, from waste. So with all this know what we did was we developed tools and a framework and we conducted experiments even with uh, some of uh, who are sat here to, uh, to see if what we have digested, uh, we could uh, have this co-creation. Uh, so actually coming back to uh, Sri Lanka, what we did was we acquired a Japanese engineering plant. Everyone talks about circular thinking, all that. So from just doing packaging and printing for apparel, we took uh, food packaging, it's something which was we had no experience in, uh, wasn't certified initially, so we had to get the PRC, all that. Uh, and we started working on materials, was primary contact with food, more challenging than apparel. And uh, we started working with people who understand at molecular level, you know, to make a package compostable. What we were doing was paper was already compostable and we were attaching laminates and all these things. So I had this understanding, but the challenge was getting retailers, getting, you know, the right certificates and all that. It was messy. It didn't happen overnight, but it was a journey that was only possible because of cooperation, because people believed in each other. They believed we could scale this. Uh, and sometimes over a dinner, you know, so luck played a, a chance too to uh, get this going. Uh, so we found in UK uh, a company that was able to, from uh, wood pulp, make uh, films that had the same properties or better of plastic, and then we made sandwich packs that sealable, all that. Today we find ourselves we're using that know-how in apparel for e-commerce packaging uh, and so on. And now this little engineering plant, we are working with different sectors here in Sri Lanka who want to experiment, you know, who are bringing different uh, lamination technologies but can't integrate it immediately to existing infrastructures. To give you an example, we did a work on uh, bra making. Uh, so we bought this foaming uh, technology. So instead of doing your usual thermoforming process, we were injecting direct to the correct cup size, immediately eliminating uh, the die cutting waste. So many examples like that are possible and now we have find ourselves in a space of hybrid machining, manufacturing from startups to mature companies wanting to do this journey at a supply level, level co-creating. And I think Sri Lanka, the platform is SSE, for example, we did uh, technology mapping for circular economy and all this is sitting in some nice reports, some brands are already doing some work. I think uh, Sri Lanka, 
we have uh, manufacturers are opening to do these demonstrator projects. Uh, and, and, and what about the, what about the talent available here for this sort of in, in sort of the talent what is needed is is it available here in Sri Lanka? Um, getting the right people on the technology side or the innovation side. I think we've got a can-do attitude, which is a startup, and uh, that exposure. So what I learned was bringing the right people to the table, and it's so hard to find these connections, but when you do, uh, you have funding challenges and all that, but, you know, that's why I said luck plays a part. You somehow, if you have that strong ambition, you make it happen. And, uh, you know, we've done projects now, we have an order book for some, you know, from a packaging supplier to now machining where you have, you know, half a million dollar order to make machine instead of a few cents a labor. So that transformation, there is a big opportunity. Well, I know, I know fashion for good here, yeah. so maybe a conversation with me with you and that might be very useful in terms of some of the innovation that's going on over here, to see how we can be involved. So pushing now to, to, um, to some climate change and, and, and carbon footprint, I think we've all seen the weather recently um, it's non-stop rain, and uh, it's obviously you know, having an impact. So the, the fashion industry, as I mentioned in my opening, is, is the second most polluting industry in the world and responsible for 10% of the of, of carbon footprint. So, you know, I'm going to pass on to Dairation now, um, group head of engineering at Brandon. So he's going to talk about, I would really like to understand for you what Sri Lanka is doing to mitigate uh, some of these challenges of carbon footprint, and how do you see that progressing I mean, in, in the next five to ten years? Thanks, thank you. Uh, yes, actually, that uh, when we are talking about the carbon footprints and the energy consumption and all, so I'm in Asia in the industry now, 15 years uh, experience, and especially I'm in the uh, field of execution of sustainability with smallest, so we are working with the technologies and execution part. And so, over uh, uh, my experience, I can see now in the latest factories. Uh, when we are building, so the energy consumption, if you compare with the eight years, nine years ago, now it is factor by four. It's, it's a good, uh, good trend. So, for example, like uh, so, when we are doing the energy uh, calculations and the demanding, it's now almost reduced factor by four compared to the uh, ten years, eight years ago. Uh, so that's uh, more or less like so. Air conditioning system is completely re-engineered and it's now coming very new, very energy efficient uh, systems and again like machineries what we are using is very energy efficient and again on top of that if you are using uh, solar, uh, solar PV systems on top of the roofs so you reduced, you are generating power and same time you reduce tremendous amount of uh, solar heat gain to the building so all together so energy consumption side it has i have seen a tremendous improvement of the efficiency side and on top of that so now in sri lanka is uh, with the government uh, incentives and the, the new tariff systems the solar uh, roof system also becoming very popular so most of companies like Bandis and Saitamani, a lot of companies now they are moving their own generations, which again reduce the carbon footprint by uh, several factors. So I think so, uh, in terms of carbon footprints, so Sri Lanka is progressing very well, and so it's it's uh, it's showing and uh, it's resulting now. Uh, though it is a lot of uh, pollutant industry, but there are a lot of things to do in future, and so there are a lot of. Uh, in terms of sustainability, there are a lot of things we can improve. So we will discuss in the later part of the discussions. So for example, like water, right? So that's water consumption is again that reducing. So I'm happy to say that Brandix, we don't have any single plastic water bottle or, or uh, entire Brandix group. So we able to eliminate entire uh, plastic uh, water bottles. So with the safe and uh, affordable drinking water for all our employees. So these are doable things and do that. Thousands of uh, waters we have eliminated month to purchase. So it's impacting the environment as well as the economy of the company as well. So uh, 
I think so. We we can uh, set the trends, and I can remember 2008. So we started uh, MAS branding. So we started the uh, lead platinum rated factories. So now you can see the hundred of factories which are certified with the uh, US green building fact. So I can remember in 2008 we uh, opened the first world platinum rated manufacturing unit in Sri Lanka. So now it is hundreds of factories all over the world, especially Bangladesh, Indonesia, Cambodia. So we can, uh, I believe so, we can set the trend for the sustainability manufacturing. Yeah, and, and, and as I mentioned earlier, in terms of the commitment that customers are now wanting, and, and you know the manufacturers now, there's you know, obviously tree planting, there's, there's, there's a solar, we've talked about some of these major initiatives that have been uh, launched very recently. Again, Sri Lanka leading the way and collaborating, uh, not only within, you know, with, with customers across the supply chain, but also also uh, within the public. So, so great, that's really good. Moving to the last uh, topic which I wanted to address, and that is, we've heard a number of times today, it's circular fashion, circular sustainability, closing the loop. So, charming uh, from, from, from Hydromani, the circular economy, Sri Lanka has been already been exploring this and how we can be relevant. Uh, 
get the synthetic waste in the industry back to the system, that's going to be a big opportunity. So whatever things that we uh, just uh, discussed was mainly post-production waste, so that's only a one part of, that's a micro picture of the circular economy. So if we take the macro picture, the bigger picture of the circular economy as consumer waste. So uh, that's where I see the biggest opportunity. Seven, uh, more than 80% of the garment waste ends up in landfill and incineratories. So uh, uh, if we can tackle as a, as a Sri, as Sri Lanka, as hub, if we can tackle this, if we can take this opportunity, as like Ellen MacArthur Foundation says, uh, that's a $500 billion US, US dollar worth of risk. So if, it, if we can have infrastructure in Sri Lanka, for whatever the shippers that we do, things that we ship, we ship close to 5 billion uh, US dollar worth of goods every year. So if there's a way to accommodate the waste out of the shippers that we do, to take it to the country and put it into a complete cycle, that's going to be a really big opportunity. So I think there's a, a clear message there that you know the industry here is willing to work, um, you know, with um, with anyone. Um, you know, we're all quite committed to wanting to be sustainable. And that any opportunities, you know, as I say, manufacturers need to play a part in, in all these in all these initiatives. We're open for business in Sri Lanka for that. Um, I do see times up, but I, we are going to open up for a few questions if there are any other questions. Otherwise, we're going to break. Are there any questions? Just uh, had a question for you. Uh, I think now Hydromani is obviously you have a whole operation in Bangladesh as well. So are we from Sri Lanka? You know, when dealing with the issue, like just looking at Sri Lanka, are we looking at uh, facilitating that for the region as well? Like kind of you know having part in Bangladesh as well to get on in kind of way. Exactly, and uh, we are happy to say we are focusing on the group level. So we have like sustainable initiatives at the business level and product level. So we are in the product level, we are mostly involved in but. What you said is like group level sustainability, so we are talking about the waste generated in Bangladesh as well, yes. Um, you were talking about closed loop. Um, I always have a bit of a problem with the word closed loop, if that really is the right idea, or we shouldn't talk about open loops, but like, with the idea to always kind of have connecting ones. Um, do you think, because like if we close now a loop in a, in a trail to trail kind of way, um, do we really know what the waste that we create now, or like the, the clothes or products we create now, that the waste will still be used for the same thing when it, the cycle closes, or should we maybe already think um, and further, and not in like closed loops, but like more in like cycles, is that uh, always open? Uh, yes, it's a closed loop, it's, uh, although it looks like a very simple term, but it's a complicated process and uh, that's why we always talk about collaboration with closed loop. So without collaboration between all these players and the consumers, it doesn't, like, uh, and, and I would say uh, to your question, it's not always a loop, it can, it can be a spiral as well. Like uh, resource from another industry can be, waste from one industry can be a resource to my industry. And the same way that my uh, products that can, uh, after decompose it, it can end up with some other industry. So, uh, one other thing is like traceability and uh, transparency of uh, the components. So that plays a major role where we have to make sure uh, that whatever the components that I use, I constantly design a product with certain materials and I have to make sure, track those materials towards the end of the life cycle of the product and then uh, whether you can you, you can use it in a different uh, industry or the, take it back into the same industry or there will be a certain com component always which goes as waste but we have to make sure that does not harm the environment and uh, uh, that can also be uh, helping the agro industry any, any biological waste and all the technical waste where we can take back in. So it's, it's a complicated loop and it's not always a loop, it can be a spiral as well. Well, I'd like to thank my panelists uh, for a very interactive and informative discussion, uh, as I say. And we
We're now going to take a break. We have half an hour break now, so refreshments are outside. Thank you. See you back in a while.